In the rain-kissed city of New York, Tom, a photojournalist, drives his taxi through the streets. Bolting and swerving through, the car splashes the muddy puddles to either side of the street. Getting to his destination, he parks the vehicle clumsily, colliding with some waste bins positioned in front. He hurriedly gets out of the car, picking a coat and a portfolio. Realizing the mess he made while parking the car, he goes back to put the waste bins in order. Now inside the building, he goes to an elevator and waits impatiently. Seeing a warning that the elevator is out of use, he decides to run through the stairs up to the seventh floor, making him breathless. Coming out of an office with his interviewer, he pleads with the interviewer to hear him out. He hands over his portfolio to the man who remarks how impressive it is. There's a but though. He has no studio work and other needed experiences and is advised to stick to photojournalism. He begs that he only needs someone to take a chance with him. But the interviewer, not even considering his plea, wishes him success with his photojournalism. Tom is left alone to his own devices, visibly sad about the outcome of the interview. The next scene introduces Claire, a vibrant and compassionate lady, who enters her home with a flower in her hand. She finds Eric, her husband, with a woman named Candy, having a discussion. She gets suspicious and asks Candy to excuse them so she can have a word with her husband. Eric explains there was nothing serious about the meeting, as Candy just happened to be in the neighborhood. Claire thinks Eric isn't truthful, convinced Eric would find excuses to stay away from her and be with people like Candy. While the back and forth continues, Candy comes and mentions how nice the bedroom paint is. This disgusts Claire who now thinks about the oddity of Candy liking their bedroom painting. Tom goes back to his apartment. Climbing through the stairs, he discovers a box he perceives to be his on the floor. Looking in it, he sees a framed picture belonging to him. He goes to meet Dave, the property owner, and makes his displeasure known. He thinks the man has a duty to ask him if he had the rent money instead of hurling his stuff outside. Dave, knowing Tom is in the habit of not paying his rent, asks him if he does have the rent money, but Tom admits he doesn't. Dave believes Tom's a fake taxi driver as he's never able to afford his basic needs. Tom promises to bring in a part payment from his runs that night. Too bad Dave isn't having any of it and proceeds to throw out the remaining of Tom's belongings. Tom resorts to begging Dave but Dave's mind is made up and Tom is officially homeless. By dawn, Tom's car trunk has all his clothes in it. He experiences an epiphany, almost immediately gets out of the car, uncovers the taxi tag and number previously concealed, and zooms off. Claire is in her office and calls, Susan, her assistant to ask if she has done a job. Susan affirms she has, but Claire gets weird, throwing surprising questions at her assistant. One of the questions is quite personal with Claire asking Susan about her relationship status. Susan replies she's single. Susan has a hunch Claire is beating around the bush, seeking a way to get her to do a certain job. But Claire debunks that, and Susan leaves Claire's office. Claire checks her voicemails and her mum's voice plays through. Her mum is discontented with her inability to get through to Claire, hence the voicemails. She tells Claire her dad had a heart attack, but softens the blow by reassuring it wasn't terminal. The news has Claire frantically leaving the office. It's a rainy evening, with the atmosphere cold and windy. Tom is seen in his taxi waiting for a potential passenger. Just then, Claire dashes out of her office building, looking around for a taxi, and finds Tom's. She beckons on Tom by waving her hands, and Tom drives to meet Claire who enters the car and just sits. Tom inquires about her destination but she instructs him to just drive. Tom, puzzled, asks again. This time she replies with a little bit of apprehension, insisting he just drives. Tom begins driving when Claire bursts into tears, wailing and crying hysterically. The trip continues with Claire crying till she's flat on the back seat of Tom's car. Tom, seeing the trip has gone quite far reminds her the fare continuing the trip would incur. She mentions she doesn't care about all that and Tom should do his job. She reaches into her purse and brings out some cash she flings scantily at him. Tom's all for the money, so he smiles at the gesture and continues driving her through the cold night till she falls asleep. By morning, Tom is still driving with Claire sleeping in the back seat of his car. Tom, seeing Claire sleeping a bit loosely with her thighs showing, bends the rear mirror over to get a view. Claire wakes up and Tom quickly switches the position of the mirror, making it proper. Claire startles as she wakes. She blurts out her consternation as to how far the ride has been with her sleeping through it. To her utter surprise, Tom reveals they're in Pennsylvania. She's stunned as to how they made it by road all the way from New York to Pennsylvania and queries Tom, wondering why he didn't just drive around New York. She picks up on Tom's intention to give her a cross-state trip so she'd have to pay extra. Tom seems elated about how much he stands to make already, as Claire asks him to turn around. Tom insists he can't do that immediately as he would have to get to a certain place first to avoid getting a ticket. Claire screams and tells him she is willing to pay for the ticket, but Tom still insists. She asks Tom to pull over which is more convenient for him so he does that. Claire then steps out the car, crying and venting frustrations. Tom laughs at the whole ordeal. Claire seems to have lost it as she decides it's a good idea to walk through an inclined path further into the bushes. Tom decides to assist by carrying her bag, but she yells at Tom to go back to the car and wait there. Tom, now sympathetic towards her, tells her there's a way they could go about the fair. He offers Claire a discount on the trip. 
Claire lets some tears flow freely down her cheeks as if in response. He escorts her through the bushes and Tom spots a farmhouse that's fascinating enough to take pictures of. He is interrupted by Claire who seeks to know his professionalism and records as a cabbie. She asks necessary questions and gets corresponding answers from Tom. An idea brews in her head and she tells Tom they'll need an atlas. They drive to the nearest store so Claire can get an atlas. When Tom asks Claire where they are headed, she replies they're going to California. He takes it as a joke but finds out she isn't bluffing and wants the trip. Tom says the trip is impossible to make, and Claire thinks Tom is only empathetic with her based on the fare already incurred. She quickly tells Tom she's willing to pay whatever the meter reads. Tom jokes the meter would break down trying to calculate the audacious trip she's requesting they make. Claire offers to pay him $2,000. He, however, advises Claire to use an airport for her trip instead. Claire mentions she doesn't fly and is willing to pay $3,000. Tom argues it's not enough. She increases it to $4,000 with Tom boldly stating he will only do it for $5,000. She agrees and Tom immediately increases the price to $6,000. Claire is in disbelief, probably not expecting that their haggle would reach this length. She gives her terms, $1,000 for every day's trip for five days. Tom agrees to the terms but adds his accommodation and feeding would have to be taken care of by her. She accepts without hesitations. Claire finds an ID card identifying her driver as Dan Reeves, and this prompts her to properly introduce herself to Tom who doesn't bother to clarify Dan Reeves isn't his real name. The drive continues through the course of different weathers. Claire opines Tom's car is depressing and needs to be looked after better. Tom gives a bunch of reasons as to why the car doesn't look great. Claire understands but remarks she's certain Tom sleeps in the car. Tom deflects, suggesting they take subsequent breaks from the course of the journey. Claire points to a spot for them to stop and alight, and Tom is relieved they'll be making a stop. Claire comes back from a mini shopping to meet Tom sleeping in the car. She knocks on the window and asks Tom to open the trunk so she can drop her bags in there. Tom sleepily opens the car trunk, revealing a pile of clothes instead of an empty car trunk. This prompts Tom to lie about the clothes in the trunk belonging to a passenger he carried earlier. According to Tom, the passenger forgot his clothes. Claire proposes they throw them away but Tom opposes vehemently. He states the owner wouldn't want that and proceeds to handle Claire's bags himself, cramming her stuff into the truck. Feeling satisfied that he has fixed the problem, he closes the trunk. A look down reveals more bags he has to somehow fit in. Claire smiles at his frustration. The trip continues with Claire making herself quite comfortable. She makes a makeshift table out of the car's rear shelf. Meanwhile, some of Tom's clothes have been relocated from the trunk to the passenger's seat, much to his discomfort. They make a stop at a coffee shop and Claire's takes to reading her atlas. Tom finds himself staring then blurting out his observations. He insinuates Claire is probably running from a crime with her aimless trips. The idea of being an accomplice to Claire's crime doesn't sit well and he expresses his wish to remove himself from the situation. Tom points out a criminal telling pattern of Claire using her husband's checkbook for all payments, and recalls her refusal to have her photos taken the other time he was playing around with his camera. Claire sees the ridiculousness in Tom's assertions but decides to play along. She concurs to slaying her husband, leaving Tom shocked. Tom has no idea he's being played and prides himself in drawing out more pieces to an invisible puzzle. He asserts Claire's husband found out about the affair she was having and this is what led to his unfortunate dismiss. This amazes Claire who has no intentions of debunking whatever Tom thinks just yet. Claire reiterates her discomfort in sharing her story with a stranger. To this, Tom replies he'll keep connecting the dots by himself if she refuses to divulge. Claire, tired of Tom's insistence, succumbs. She narrates her father's heart attack and the fact he's hospitalized. She tells Tom her unwillingness to continue the discussion and asks him to say something else if he has to talk. He concedes, knowing Claire is married and asks how marriage feels. He reveals his disinterest in it and supports his point about people having unfeasible hopes in marriage. Tom points to an old couple sitting at a corner in the coffee shop with no form of conversation going on between them. Tom paints a potential scenery for Claire about the couple and how their marriage must have spiraled over the years. Claire has a different thought, she thinks they might be enjoying the quietness. Tom believes his perception about the old couple is the truth and would rather stick to that analysis. Claire wonders why someone who prides himself as a guru in relationship matters isn't married. She opines he must have had near-marriage relationships, and he reveals he has a degree in psychoanalysis, concurring with Claire's assertion that he's a therapist. It still amazes Claire as to why he chose to be a cabbie. Tom says he does taxi for driving fun, and Claire, avoiding eye contact with Tom, as she reveals Tom is better at driving taxis than being a therapist. On another cold night, while on the trip, Tom doses off while driving. Claire notices the car slowly veering into another path, facing a side pavement. Unsure of what's happening, she calls out to Tom who doesn't reply. With her fear tripling with every passing second, she yells at him and taps Tom who wakes up from his slumbering, shocked. Seeing the car heading for the side pavement, he swerves back a little and makes a swift turn, back on track. 
They both catch their breath while Tom makes light of the situation, saying it's a car alignment issue. Claire isn't having any of it and asks Tom to stop the car. Tom doesn't stop and argues they should go on as he has everything under control. Claire, visibly angry, yells at Tom to pull over at the nearest hotel. She heads to the hotel and asks for a room, but when she reaches into the car for her purse she finds it's missing. Accepting the reality that they can't afford spending the night in a comfortable space, they resort to spending it in the car. Claire takes the back seat while Tom takes the front passenger seat. She reveals she's cancelled of all the credit cards in the lost purse and inquires how much Tom has on him. He replies he has just $83. She further inquires about his credit card strength and Tom reiterates he has only $83 through and through. Claire becomes confused as to why a therapist would have such a small amount to his name. Claire suggests they could use his money to continue the trip but Tom disagrees. Tom counters Claire calls her husband to send some money but she refuses fiercely. Tom brings back his theory and says she can't call him because she actually slayed him. Claire debunks it and claims he isn't deceased but she's still not gonna call him. Tom becomes beyond puzzled, unable to wrap his head around why Claire would prefer to be stranded than call her husband for aid. Tom tauntingly suggests they sell her things on eBay. Claire, who is now lying on the seat, covering herself with a blanket, starts crying. Tom points out her obvious distress but this infuriates Claire and she demands he minds his business. Next thing, she's charging at Tom and pulling his hair. Going as far as to throw hands at Tom who tells her off and holds her down. They wake up to the sun blazing through the car window. Claire is surprised to see that she and Tom slept together in the front passenger seat. She gets down in search of a bathroom, and Tom uses the opportunity to zoom off, leaving Claire behind. He enjoys the ride alone and laughs at the fact he's ditched the crazy lady. His countenance soon changes and he makes a U-turn to get Claire. He finds a dejected and hopeless Claire seated at a corner of the hotel. She's relieved to see Tom return and quickly enters the car. When she asks him where he went, Tom lies he went searching for food. She suspects Tom actually abandoned her, but Tom doesn't bulge and resumes driving. They arrive at another hotel and Tom hops down, carrying an empty rolling suitcase. He goes straight to the front desk and tries to negotiate for the hotel's complimentary breakfast. Succeeding, he fills the suitcase with food, as much as it can contain. A couple having breakfast at a table look on, baffled. Tom is embarrassed enough to reluctantly drop back just a banana. Next stop is a country home, and Claire eats from what Tom was able to gather from the hotel. Maybe it's the comfort of the food, because Claire is led to share a little childhood memory. After her story, she tells Tom she'll sort out any problems that might arise with regards to the cab company. He smiles and asks her how they plan to get to California. She has an idea and they proceed to a nearby airport. Tom and Claire are seen at the airport handling a man's bag, asking the man his destination so they could take him there. Claire's big idea was this, pick passengers from the airport and drive them to their destinations at exuberant prices. The exuberant price part doesn't work though. Tom converses with the passenger while Claire studies the map for directions. But when they reach the passenger's destination and Claire mentions the fair price, the passenger argues the price is unusually high. Claire and Tom end up settling on the average price. They pick up different passengers at different times and charge high fare prices. At some point, they're at the gas station when Claire suggests they go back to the airport to pick passengers. Tom suggests other Otherwise. She sees a sign, a plant growing on the bad spot of the tarred road and picks it up before resuming her aimless journey. While on the road, she places the plant into a makeshift vase made from cartons. Their trip continues deep into the night with Claire sleeping and leaning towards Tom. A signpost reveals they're at a boulder, and Tom makes an exit, driving his way to a compound. Being careful while parking the car, Tom unintentionally nudges some waste bins in front. He has to properly position the bins before stealthily making his way around an apartment and up the balcony. Claire wakes and is surprised to see Tom's missing. Tom is busy navigating his way inside a bedroom in the apartment. He is still upstairs, unknowing to the occupant of the house, when Claire rings the doorbell. A man answers the door and Claire tells him she's looking for a man who might have excused himself and made his way into his house. The man refutes it, and Claire remarks Tom has abandoned her. She inquires her current location from the occupant who reveals they are in Boulder. While Claire is still trying to get her bearings, the man's wife comes to the door. Meanwhile, Tom is still in the house, listening to the conversation, when Claire brings an ID card and hands it over to the couple. The couple are surprised to see Tom's face on the card, and Tom quickly reveals himself feigning a surprise from the get-go. Claire looks puzzled, watching the couple hug Tom and expresses happiness at seeing him. Tom reiterates the surprise element in the visit and introduces the couple as his parents to a mystified Claire. He tells the parents driving across states to Boulder was a random idea that has brought him here. Tom's dad doesn't believe a word of it, but Tom waves his father's doubts and continues to feign excitement. His parents invite them in for dinner. At the dining table, Tom's father expresses strongly that the story doesn't add up. Claire mentions their next stop is Las Vegas, to see her mom. Claire also mentions Tom as a cabbie to the utter disappointment of his parents. They're baffled he's driving a cab when he should be in Wall Street. 
He assures he drives the cab for fun, tagging the vehicle as a mobile office. After dinner, they step out of the house, but Tom's father isn't falling for Tom's shenanigans. Claire and Tom bid farewell and resume their trip. Claire is concerned for Tom and how meeting his parents in this manner must have been sad for him. She offers to assist him in driving, and surprisingly, Tom parks so they can switch seats. By the following morning, they're in the middle of nowhere. Tom inquires about how they got there but Claire states she has no idea either. She admits she must have dozed off and this pisses Tom off. Claire tries to start the car but the engine keeps failing. When Tom takes over, it's the same result. They set out to find a nearby place with human activities. On their way, Claire asks why he persisted with the lie about his name and put up an attitude with his parents. She believes his parents care enough and didn't fall for his pretense. They have a back and forth about their lives, leading Claire to clarify she left New York because she caught her husband cheating. Tom is amazed to find out Claire didn't see anything substantial to conclude her husband was indeed cheating. Their journey from the land of nowhere leads them deep into another land of nowhere. Claire wakes up early to find a towing truck passing by and she wakes Tom as that's their ticket out of their current location. They are towed into town where Tom inquires why she hates taking pictures. She replies she isn't photogenic but Tom disagrees. By the end of their back and forth, they're both smiling at each other with Claire feeling a tad bit better. The pair find a mechanic whom gives them a bill they can't afford. Claire opines to call the cab company for assistance, and the mechanic bursts Claire's bubble by revealing the cab isn't registered to any company. Tom, wanting to rescue his image and dignity, quickly rakes up all the money on him and pays. Afterwards, Tom tries to explain himself to Claire. He tells Claire the truth about buying the cab at an auction and confesses to stealing from his parents, hence, the miracle money he used to pay the mechanic. He gets emotional and admits he's tired of how things are for him and promises he's never lying to her again. The journey continues, leaning towards adventurous with them making stops at choice locations. Claire's mom's apartment is one of these choice locations. Her mom welcomes them in, serves them a meal, then encourages Claire to call her husband. Her mom keeps the atmosphere warm with conversations and stories, before revealing Claire's father's heart attack eventually led to his passing. The news makes Claire erratic and she runs out into the car with Tom running after her. She starts the car, seeking to drive out and ends up hitting the neighbor's waste bins in front. She pours out her frustrations by hitting the car's steering wheel, several times before bursting into tears. Tom's shoulder is available to lean on while she cries. The melancholic moment is interrupted when the owner of the waste bin Claire hit asks them to sort it out. By morning, Claire, her mom, and Tom set out to her dad's ash-scattering ceremony. On arrival, Claire meets Eve, her stepsister. Pleasantries are exchanged and Eric, Claire's husband, steps in. He is greeted by Claire's mom who hugs him excitedly. Eric asks to speak to his wife in private and she doesn't fight him. Eric reveals he has the habit of talking to people about their relationship, hence the Candy situation. He apologizes and emphasizes nothing ever happened with him and Candy. Eric says he believes they can work things out when Eve interrupts to announce all the guests are present. Eric pitches one last statement before they have to go, he misses her and doesn't want to ever feel that way again. The ceremony is at the seaside and Eve gives her candid and heartfelt tribute. She hands over the ashes to Claire who scatters it. Later on, the sisters embrace and Claire seeks final solace in her husband's arms. After the ceremony, Eric hands over a check to Tom. They are saying their goodbyes when Claire steps in to hear Tom reveal he isn't certain he'd be going back to New York. Claire skims through the car to make sure she isn't leaving anything behind when Tom blurts out his wish that Claire stays. She couldn't possibly do that, so Tom shares his condolences and she leaves with her husband. Eric and Claire arrive at the airport in New York and board a taxi. The atmosphere becomes chaotic for Claire with Eric on a heated argument on his phone while the taxi driver is also on a call, speaking a different language. Claire dials her mum who just got dropped by Tom. Meanwhile, Tom is on an unknown journey. He spots the plant Claire had previously been nurturing and waters it, wearing a ghost of a smile. Claire goes back to her usual life. Her daily routine is a boss, conversing tasks with her assistant, Susan. On her way out of the office, Claire finds a parcel at the door. She gets home and listens to her pending voicemails, and her sister's voice rings through first. Tom's is next in line, revealing he sent the parcel. Claire unwraps it and finds a journal with pictures from their almost never-ending trip. The last page of the journal has a card attached to it with an address. Driving all the way, she gets to the address and finds the little plant from the trip with Tom. Tom's care for the plant intrigues Claire. Tom eventually steps out and holds her gaze from a distance. Both smiling, they close the distance, suggesting the continuation of an interesting experience. 